get Lou back there. What do you do with the money? Do you do other things? Do you do other things? The natural reaction to the Blood Diamond movie is going to be for jewelers and consumers to say, I don't want any diamonds from Sierra Leone. I don't want any diamonds from West Africa. I don't want any diamonds from artisanal diggers. Now that's a serious problem. If I said to you that a 15 year old kid was digging for diamonds in Sierra Leone, you might say, that's terrible. And you'd be right. But I want you to look deeper and understand the African context. His parents were dead of AIDS. And he had a 13 year old sister. And if he didn't dig for those diamonds and support her with a cup of rice a day, in all likelihood, she'd become a prostitute to live. Now you tell me, should that kid dig for diamonds or not? And with a life expectancy of 38 years old, how old is a 15 year old in Sierra Leone years? And it's complicated. Development issues are really, really tough. Because if you help the people, you just do it in a, in a non-thinking way, you actually hurt them. Now the situation today is that while there's no war going on in Sierra Leone, it's still one of the poorest countries in the world. While the Kimberley process controls the flow of diamonds, it doesn't address the development needs of the people in Sierra Leone and West Africa. And what we do in America for fun or entertainment has a great impact on what's going on. I think what the NGOs are doing and some of the filmmakers, they're, start, they're trying to oversimplify the case. Non-government organization, NGO is a non-government organization and they raise issues that are important to be raised. That's fine, it's good to raise the issue, but we have to address not creating a boycott. Global Witness has to take responsibility for the fact that if consumers stop buying from people in Sierra Leone because of their advocacy work, the net result is that people in Sierra Leone are gonna suffer. And Zweck who's making this fantastic action movie, and then everyone thinks, oh, you need this movie star, that movie star. You don't need movie stars. You need people who relate to the people of Africa and enable them, create an enabling environment for these people to succeed. A boycott of diamonds from Sierra Leone is the worst thing in the world because it takes the poorest people in the world and it kicks them when they're down. Sure, they raise the issue, but what are people doing to actually care about the people in Sierra Leone? And you've got to understand also, the poverty that we see in Sierra Leone is somewhat mitigated by the fact that the people can dig for diamonds and earn a cup of rice or a dollar a day. Now that may seem very bad for an American, but the fact is there's no alternative employment in Sierra Leone today. If you don't dig for those diamonds, what are you going to do? There's no other jobs available. The real problem of Africa isn't just diamonds, it's poverty. And it's through poverty alleviation, it's through the creation of jobs that we can really have an impact on the rest of the world. There is no way that we should or can, can deny the horror of what happened in Sierra Leone. Now I went to Sierra Leone in 2000 while the war was still on. And I flew out there in a World Food Program helicopter sitting on sacks of rice. And let me tell you, it was mind blowing. I mean, I met this guy Sanko. I was trying to negotiate with the rebels on behalf of the US government. And my job was to try to convince him to move his rebels out of the Kono district. When I went to the MBT camp, everyone was missing one or even two limbs. Everywhere you looked, thousands of people. Uh, this little girl Maria, maybe she was a year and a half old. The baby, they, they hacked off her hand. They showed me the school where they were teaching and the teachers were amputees, the children were amputees. And there were kids, uh, there were like babies that were sleeping in like milk crates. And I said to myself, my God, look at what's happened here. Look, I've got no grandparents. They were all killed in Auschwitz. I've got no uncles, no aunts, no real cousins, um, because our entire families were killed in the war. This stuff happens. It's real. It happened to our family, uh, just like a generation before me. And I remember showing this to my kids on my video camera and saying, look what I saw. And they were moved. And I wrote that story, you know, Guilt Trip. It's available at diamonds.net. And you know, it was read into the congressional record by Tony Hall when he introduced the Clean Diamond Act. But it's not TV. It's real people. So what we need to recognize is that the diamonds are an important lifeline for the most poor people in the world. What you can do is you can encourage people to buy diamonds from West Africa. But make sure that it's not a conflict diamond. What you can say is, look, if there are diamonds from West Africa that'll help these people, I wanna buy them. Don't shy away from helping the people who need your help the most.